Labor Senator Melandiri McCarthy has today read out the names of some of the hundreds of First Nations people who have died in police custody, enshrining their names on the parliamentary record. These are the people that hundreds of thousands of Australians walk the streets for this week, last week, and will no doubt continue to do so. We don't know some of the others, a lot of the other names, but we certainly pay our respects to those families still seeking justice, equality and fairness in our country. And we must never stop the pursuit of justice, equality and fairness for all Australians, especially First Nations people. Labor Senator Melandiri McCarthy joins me this afternoon. Senator, welcome. Hello, Patricia. As we uh, showed there, today you read out the names of First Nations people who have died in custody. Why did you decide to do this? It's been a difficult fortnight in settings. We're not quite over yet. We've still got another day to go. And I thought it was important uh, that uh, we put on the record the human side of uh, the many deaths. And as I said there, we don't know all the names, but those that we do, it was important to bring forward to the parliament uh, in the midst of many obscene things that have been said uh, in the Senate in particular, that we're talking about families and we're talking about people who um, mm -hmm. I felt that their names needed to be heard. The, actually naming these people, explaining, as you say, that they're real people with names, with families, uh, with lives that were taken, how important is that, that dimension in trying to connect with the broader Australian public about this story? I think it's really important, uh, Patricia, given uh, the various uh, sort of breadth this, this debate has gone from uh, complete division, hatred to understanding, to trying to bring about not only the Australian Parliament but the Australian people uh, to, to find that sense of empathy and respect. I spoke in the Parliament the other night about so many things that we don't understand but that doesn't mean we should close the door to, to those people that we don't understand and I asked and urged the Prime Minister not to demonise uh, the Australian people who were uh, walking the streets. So I guess uh, my role and certainly uh, Senator Pat Dodson in this instance was just trying to bring about some sense of humanity to this debate uh, that sometimes in life uh, and a lot of times in political life uh, we're, we're very much challenged and we, we have to uh, put our case and in our instance we put a very human case. Senator, these names, these numbers are not new. The only new part here is what appears to be a sort of public appetite for change. How frustrating has it been to get these stories onto the sort of national agenda? Yeah, no, that's a really important question, Patricia. It's uh, uh, been enormously difficult. I mean, I reflected just today on even reporting on the Royal Commission into Aboriginal deaths in custody, and even then at the time, how, how difficult that was. Uh, what we've seen here, I think, in the last two or three weeks is an absolute movement, an almost uh, incredible wave of movement throughout the globe that things should not remain the same, that things have to change. And even here, here in, in the Parliament, I, I can feel it, I can sense it, uh, that we have to be careful as politicians not to further incite hatred and division. Uh, and, and it's important that even our language and what we say in here matters. It really does. In terms of action that's needed, you know that the Minister for Indigenous Australians is working with the Prime Minister at a sort of national level with state and territory leaders on new targets in the Closing the Gap process to include a reduction of Indigenous incarceration. They're working out, they're nutting out the ambition now. How ambitious should it be? How much do the actual targets matter? Well, I think it's going to need a great deal of uh, not only talking 
Patricia, but investment and serious focus uh, in each state and territory jurisdiction. Uh, we've certainly, as a First Nations caucus, been briefed by Pat Turner, who's the chair of the Peaks, uh, just in relation to just how things may be going in those negotiations. And what I've also said on the record here is that we've seen with the handling of the COVID-19 that the Prime Minister and the leadership around the country are very capable of dealing with something and why not have this at the highest level through the National Cabinet? So the, they're working clearly on this as a priority. They say next month they're going to be releasing the new targets. You said you'd been briefed by the co-chair of that process. Are you confident that they are going to deliver targets that, you know, this movement of Australians now who want to see action on this will be satisfied by? I'm certainly confident uh, in Pat Turner and the Peaks who are meeting around the table. Uh, they're enormously passionate, but they're also very experienced in this space uh, in all the areas of justice and health and education and also First Nations media who are also involved. So I have a lot of confidence uh, in their ability to try and uh, put uh, to the Prime Minister, uh, Ken Wyatt as the Indigenous Affairs Minister, the direction that they should go. I guess what we need to see is what kind of commitment they will come from the Prime Minister and Ken Wyatt in response. We already know one of the sticking points because Pat Turner put it on the record on this program just last week. She said it was housing and uh, Commonwealth funding for housing. She said the Commonwealth says it's a state issue but they were pushing for, for more money for housing because of course this is seen as a whole uh, sort of government approach not just this one issue. It's all linked. Do you think the Commonwealth should be investing more in housing and do you have a figure that you think they should be working towards? Well there is no doubt that housing is at the root of a lot of the issues in terms of First Nations people. We've seen that through the COVID experience. Uh, we know that just through the entrenched poverty and the concerns that we have of homelessness. Uh, there's certainly a figure more broadly nationally which I wouldn't have but I certainly know from the Northern Territory Patricia uh, we definitely need uh, well over what we have there in particular not just for our communities but also the homelands and our stations. Just finally, the Western Australian Parliament has passed a bill designed to end the controversial imprisonment of people with unpaid fines. And of mm. course, this has been a call for decades now. It's finally officially happened in the last jurisdiction in the country. Uh, it's a pretty significant moment, isn't it? An absolutely significant moment, Patricia. And, uh, you know, just your thoughts go to the families who've had people die in custody, especially in WA. Uh, the most uh, obvious one that comes to mind is Miss Do over unpaid fines and having lost her life there. Uh, I think for that family in particular and the people who uh, have uh, pushed since 2016 in terms of Miss Do uh, were incredibly relieved. But it, you know... Like with most things, uh, it should never have to take that long. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you.